Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the stream that went on a short break because I had too much work to do. So now that the game jam is live, I can actually talk about why I had no time. So I'm going to talk about it very shortly. I know that we had all of our judges jump in, talk about the game jam, like back to back to back. I'm not going to go over every little thing like like they did because I don't think it's needed and I think everyone also wants to get to the game making part of the stream but I just wanted to touch on a little bit so the touch the stars game jam is live you can see the nice address up here in the corner go find it you can see I have way too many notifications at the moment so touch the stars game jam what is it it's a month-long game jam turn in you you make a game Turn it in in 24 days, 7 hours, 58 minutes, and 20 seconds if you happen to be watching right at this second. Otherwise, July 22nd, end of the day Pacific. I'm in Eastern time, so it's saying uh, 3 a.m. for me, but that's Pacific time. So midnight Pacific, July 22nd, get in a game. Only thing you have to do about this game is it has to be made in MZ. One condition. Two condition. It has to include the theme somewhere. It has to include somewhere the theme of touching the stars. So here's the thing about that. It's a really open theme. And people are asking, what do you mean by that? Um, and that, that's the wrong question. We want to ask you, what do you mean by that? Like, as long as you see the theme in your game, more than likely... If we really can't see it at all, we'll probably just ask you. Hey, what, what was, how, how do you implement the theme in the game? But for the most part, just like, be liberal with it. If you want to make a game about literally going to space, that could be touching the stars. If you want to make a game about a person who is striving to do their best, that's also a, a you know, valid theme. Hey, Rath, how you doing today? So, like, just make a game that you think has that theme in any way you can interpret it. So that other stipulation, you have to use MZ. So, you may have to use MZ, but we are providing a fully featured free version of it to use until after the contest is over. Um, you can find the link to it in this page. Once again, here's the address to find the game jam directly. And then we're going to give huge cash prizes, 1000 for the top, 500 250 and then 250 for a fan favorite. So that's cool, right? Everyone likes um, big cash prizes. As I joked on one of the other streams, with $1,000, you can almost buy a graphics card from a, from a scalper. Um, I really want a new graphics card, guys. I just, it's, it's not happening right now. I also want a PS5. That also is not happening right now. So our four judges, we got Drifty from Driftwood Gaming, Teal from Studio Blue, Hawk Zombie. He's just Hawk Zombie. He does his stuff on Twitch, and he also has a YouTube channel. And then we have Benny, who does the podcast RPG Maker Cola, which I was on um, a couple months back. Go watch that or listen to that. It was very fun. I was on my Studio Blue uh, with Steel and Teal. Uh, so that's our judges. I'm not going to go through every single rule here. Just go read them or go watch one of the other streams that our judges did. They all went over each individual rule. The main deals are it has to be Windows. It has to be English. You can include other versions, but uh, we can only play the Windows version and we can only, uh, all of our judges, I think, only speak English. Um, I know I only speak English because I'm an American and we don't know how to speak other languages. I, I do speak a touch of Spanish, but it's very bad and out of practice. But um, no plagiarizing, no no knocking, like using things that you don't have the rights to. Turn it in on time. Um, credit whoever you take you, uh, whoever's materials you're using. All, all like pretty simple stuff, right? Don't don't using no current real life figures. Um, we we I think for the IGMC or something we got a a, a troll game that was about Obama and it was not kosher in a lot of ways. 
Um, so nothing like that. Um, in general, if we find your game to be like offensive like that game was, it wouldn't even matter about the real world figures because that game was that submission was a little bit on the racist side and i'm being understating here so if you do anything like that yeah we're going to disqualify it because we do have the right to disqualify stuff for this gross horrible horrible thing like no no i don't know man i, I feel like i don't even shouldn't have to say that right it's not in the rules but it does say we can disqualify things but man that that game kind of annoyed me when we did it, the igmc and i think that was that was the 2018 jam where that was submitted okay so that's the main stuff for this. I just wanted to touch on this jam game jam. I didn't want to spend an incredible amount of time on it. Just five minutes run through everything. Um, so what else is going on right now? We also have our store site and uh, store and Steam summer sales are going on. So get things for cool discounts. Thirty percent off on MZ. I think everyone should move to MZ because I think it's just way better than MB. Um, but that's really all I'm going to touch on in that. And then we're going to jump over to actually, oh, here's a question. So I'm going to close this. And it's like roulette of if the thing, um, oh, Wrath, what rule thing do you want to point out? If there's one rule you think I should talk about, I'm, I'm pretty open to this act, answering any questions you have, or if you think it's something that just needs to be talked about. But anyway, I'm going to do the roulette of hoping that the window under this is the one I want. And it was. Whereas, I don't know if you guys knew this, but because it's the easiest way to do the uh, the looping, I just used the sound test in MZ to play the intro music on these things. So, a bit of something funny to me is that... So, this map is what we're going to be... Avoid using paid plugins in case you win the jam and it becomes a sample project. Um, so here's the thing. None of them are going to be sample projects. Um, it's we're we're not doing them as sample projects. We're doing them as um, what's the word for it? Uh, where they're not going to be open. You, you can have them closed off. The, the main thing is is not that we want to have games that people can open and learn from. That's not what we're looking for. We are looking for uh, games that. Um, just exemplify the cool stuff you can do with them then. Um, so if we're, if we release it, it's, it's not going to be sample game style where people can open it and learn from it. Unless the, unless you as the dev is, uh, have the rights to do that and you want to have it to be able to be opened, that's fine. And we could do it that way, but that's, n we were probably going to release them as uh, encrypted projects. So not actually something you have to work, worry about. Um, so th there's one other thing I wanted to do before I got to what we're actually doing today. It was just something I had noticed some people having like some confusion about. So I wanted to just a little beginner's guide on how auto layers work. Um, also, oh man, the update. I love these buttons here. These buttons are so good. Look at these. Isn't that a wonderful thing to have? Glad they added these in the update. Um, there was some other stuff they added in the update that was really, really fantastic that I'm a big fan of. But these are the ones that I'm going to notice. Like, all of them are really useful updates. This is the one that is probably going to be the biggest difference to me, like, the number of times I use it. So, I'm going to really quickly just uh, grab a new map. And put it on just, um, I think uh, outside's a really good one to put it on. So I wanted to talk about how auto layers work. Because like I said, I've, I've noticed some people like being confused about exactly how auto layers work. And how they layer things. So first thing is you have multiple different types of tiles. You have your tile A1 tiles, which are all these up these first two rows then you have your a2 tiles which are these right here um these are a4 tiles i believe oh wait does this one have let's see make sure i remember which ones this one has so outside this one does have a4 it does, and then i have and i was correct it does it does have a3 that's right a3 is 
um, these right here, I think, and then these are A4. That may be right. Yeah, these right here are A4. These are your A3 tiles. Um, and this down here is A5. And then the other ones are obvious because it's B, C. So, the important thing to know with auto tiles, if you're doing the, or not auto tiles, but auto layering, if you have it on automatic layering, which I keep calling auto layering, um, it's very simple to know what layer things are going to be on. Any part of A, with one exception, goes on layer one. So A1 tiles, they're always on layer one. We're going to skip over A2 because it's the weird one. So A3 tiles. Oh, well, hold on. E. A3 tiles, always on layer one. Got our A4 tiles, always on layer one. A5, again. Always on layer one. The one exception and the only time layer two is used by automatic layers is this half of A2. This right half. This left half of A2 always goes as well on layer one. This over here goes on to layer two. Um, this is the only part that automatically will go on layer two. So that's how you touch, uh, that's like the, the A layer, which covers how automatic layers do one and two. And then you have three and four. Three and four are used by our, your B through E layers. And the way it works is the first thing you put down um, in an, uh, in, from this right here will go on layer three. Wait, actually, does it go on layer four first? Yeah, it goes on layer four first. And then if you put something on top of it, That was kind of a bad example. So let me like delete. All right, so if you put something there, it's on layer four. Let's go back to automatic. Now, if you put something on top of it, what it does is push it what's on layer four down to layer three and then puts your layer, the new thing on layer four. And if you put yet another thing on top of that, pushes what you had on layer four down to layer three, and if anything was on layer three, it vanishes. And that's everything about how to automatic layers work. That's it, that's the whole thing. And I just wanted to touch on that because like, I think that some people didn't quite understand. There's some things in tile A5 um, in, let's, let's look at, I think it's in dungeon tile A5 that has, yeah, like these right here, these right here with automatic layering will go on layer one, but if you want to do this little floating thing above another tile, you'll need to manually go drop up. So that was just a quick breakdown of how the layers work because I, I think it's important to understand if you're going to use auto layers much, automatic layering. I personally just, just don't. I prefer to like try to lay, uh, tie, uh, do my tiles as much as I can in uh in manual layers i find that it works much better especially now that we have the buttons up here so it's very very quick to switch we are a little quiet today how many people we got in chat eight people watching you guys must be working on your game jam games that's what it is just watching me in the background while you make much better games than me and that's fine I hope you do make much better games than me, or at least make them much quicker than I do. Okay, so the main thing right now is I want to... What I was going to work on... That little guy was there from when I was making a screenshot. Is working on our eventing. Does it say that on the forums? It says sample games? Huh. I uh, probably wrote that, and I shouldn't have wrote it that way. Uh, or it's more like the thing of I meant it differently than what I said. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll like, uh, go clarify it on the, the, uh, the forums after this stream. 
Bit pocket. Yeah. Well, I mean, you you need to be actively working on because you don't got a whole lot of time. And like I said, you guys need to make games faster than me to get a game in. Um, I would love to work faster on my game, but I'm I'm just like, I just want to get a demo out of my game. Um, and so I think that's my goal for like. When should I place that goal? Let's look at what I I I, I know I, I I it's been a while. Been working so hard on getting the the uh, game jam launched, which was it was a lot of work. I'm gonna I'm not gonna lie. It was very fun. It was one of those things. Hold on, I get a sip of tea. One of the things that's very funny is that every single time we have these really really super big projects, right? Um, like this, which is the biggest thing we've done since we did uh, the IGMCs. And sorry, I'm actually trying to find my thing that has what all I need to get to get. So I can get an idea of when I need to get Steam. I have my variable track. Yeah, there we go. This has like all my stuff. So this was my first dungeon stuff. Um, the cliffside map um, is actually like 95% done. So let's update that. How goes the game making? Slow, as always. Don't, don't learn from me on pace if you wish to make a game for the game jam. Because my pace is um, legitimately bad. So, okay. We're going to look at this. Oh, the thing—it's good, Ralph. What um, what plugin was it? I'm just curious. I'm curious to see what you're working on. So, what we're doing here is we're gonna do, we're gonna drop doing some maps for a bit because if I have to work on a map for another two hours on stream, I'm going to like stream. Right? It's it is just not something i'm really wanting to do right now it's i've done enough of it so what i want to do is start working on this stuff down here so right now all of my venting that i have is just i've done the venting for the puzzles i've done most of them for the fort memories but i haven't finished dialogue and i need to I'm probably going to do this a little bit more with this one too, where I, I write in dialogue and then think about it and go, I'm probably going to need to address how bad it is. It's top secret, but involves a lot of 3E stuff. Okay, looking forward to seeing that then. I hope we get a lot of entries. You know the thing about doing database stuff for two hours is, one, I haven't finished my uh, battle system yet. I need to work on I I need to sit down with um with a spreadsheet and actually go through and write down everything that I want to do uh battle wise. I have it like really rough, but I don't have enough of it where I can actually do database stuff because there's so many things that interact when you do your database. There's so much stuff that interacts with the battle system. Um it's also like this uh cutscene right here is going to have just a placeholder for the battle tutorial part of it because I can't do it because my battles not battles are not ready. And I really think I need to work a lot on my battles uh, off stream because I think that will be the most boring thing, even more boring than staring at this uh spreadsheet. And also uh I need my brain. And as we have established many times, this the moment you start streaming, your IQ drops about 100 points. And so I'm gonna work on battle system uh, off stream. But, so I do wanna do this cutscene and I wanna get, here's what I wanna get done today, is these three. Um, they're gonna have to placeholder battles in them and the battle tutorial one's gonna have a placeholder bit in it. Um, do I have, I know I have variables, 26 dungeon one. So yeah, I do have uh, my variable like, it's 26. Variable 26 is my dungeon one progress. I have listed what the the points are 
for when each thing happens. This is important because this lets me uh, know without having to, I need to turn off my Steam alerts again. I always forget to do this. What I'll do, there we go. Really quickly pop up my friends thing. Make myself not offline. There we go. I always forget everything that uh, that sends alerts on this. Next, you'll see my Windows alerts. Wish everything was like Discord and had a mode just to turn alerts off. And Discord just notices that I'm opening up um, OBS and is just like, "Yep, we're gonna turn this off." But this right here is really important, I think, to pre-plan out. That's not that's not level video wizard. This is the uh the uh value that the variable is going to be when you're at each step. The reason I jump by tens is so if later I decide, oh, I wanted to put one more thing in between those, I can jump, you know. I can like throw something in there at like 15 if I wanted something between these two scenes. This is just to keep track of the the value of the variable. Um, and it's important to do that because otherwise you just have to remember what you said everything should set to. And that can be difficult to do. So, had a Windows alert pop up when recording a video. Yeah, it's annoying. I'm like, there. I, I know there probably is a way to tell it to turn alerts off temporarily, but... Anyway, so Hey, you know how you said a different variable for each chapter? Look at that. A different variable for mine's for each dungeon, which is each chapter, and then there's going to be a free play section between each dungeon. Um and then each of the side quests are also going to have their own variable. But yeah, it's really easy for record keeping. And so this is just like an easy way to keep records. I always want my final to be way higher in case I really need to make a lot of changes, which I doubt I will. There's probably gonna be a supplemental variable now that I think about it to handle a few little things. I'm probably gonna have like one variable per map actually. Um, to handle something specific that I'll talk about later that we're not working on today, so not important. Right click where the window alerts go, focus assist off. Eh, I'll worry about it next time. So I'm going to take this and it's going to go on my other monitor where you guys can't see it, but I know it's there. And I'll drag it back over if we need it. Okay, so when this map starts, uh, our our player character is going to come out right here. Um, how that's the the storyline wise, how that's working is they're in the convenience store, they leave, and then boom, they're right here. They're very um, confused by that. So because they're popping through what we need is an auto run which auto runs always go all right now we're going to do the thing i talk about every map i ever make and all this is going to be copy pasted over because this is my work in progress map but i don't have my final map done but i can copy paste that's fine so every map has three blank events up here titled actor one actor two actor three these are events that i just use if i need to drag in somebody else into the scene right so like if an npc comes onto the scene that doesn't exist on the map already i just move this just off of screen and then move them and change the image to the thing i need and have them move into the scene and start talking then i always I know it's not necessary, but I always, I mean, you always want to turn them back to uh, nothing. Um, which is fine. 
But I also always put them back where they went because I'm just a little obsessive about it. I know that's not ready, really necessary. And I always put those in the upper right. This is, again, just me. If you want to put them in the lower right or the lower left, if you want to put them in the middle of your map, it's a really weird thing. Um, I just always put them in the upper right because it's easy for me to remember where they are. And then if my map needs an auto run, I always put it up in the upper left. An auto run and or a parallel process. In fact, I generally make... I almost spelled the auto run. I generally make, and this is going to seem odd, but I generally make one, two of them up here, even if I never use them. I can't spell parallel. That is not correct. I just put them up here. Even if I don't use them, it's just useful to have them there, and I know where they are on the list, where they are in on the map. I can find them pretty fast. So with this one, we know uh, our main character. Um... Wow, what is our main character's name? It starts with a W. Ren. Ren is going to be standing right there. So we need to go from there. And we need an auto run. It's Sunday night. It's a bit much for auto run at this point of time. Maybe on a Friday night. We'll just have to do some auto run. Um, running off all of that nice, wonderful calories you ate over the weekend on your Sunday night. All right, so we're gonna keep it um, some somewhat PG. Okay, so she's confused. Then we're going to have our second actor. So we're going to have like a, a uh, you know how like some games have like a mascot character? Kind of like uh, Morgana, but less annoying, hopefully. Um, and not as an actual playable character in this one. Because like Persona is really a thing. They, they like having their mascot play characters be playable, but we're not doing that in this one. So, let's see, set event location. Okay, I need to know something, and I know I could know it by just... Is this not set to auto run yet? Okay, good. I don't want it set to auto run yet. I need to know where on the map... If my player is right here, what's going to be off the map? That's important. Or I could just teleport them in right here behind the tree, but we'll check. And I could do it with math, or I could just start up the game and see where off the map is. So off the map is way down here. So I think I want to actually use like maybe behind a tree somewhere instead, because that's a long way for a, something to come up. I think maybe like right here behind like pulling it in from behind this tree would be our mascot care that is 3512 i forget that i have such a high, uh, on a higher resolution that like your how far off is off map because that's like way was it down here i think was off map for it that's like a long way for an NPC to come from the edge of the screen. It's easy to hide behind stuff like that. Okay, so. Going back to our auto run event. Okay, set event location. Actor 1. Direct designation we want right behind this tree. And direction up. 
I don't think it'll matter. Then we're gonna do a, a move up. Suddenly pineapples. You know, I'm not normally a huge fan of pineapples, but I just really want it. I, I kind of wanted some. Will the mascot character be a Komodo dragon? That would be cool, but I don't think I have a, um, now that you say it, I kind of want it to be. But I need a face set and a, um, uh, and a sprite for it. I might look into someone making that. For right now, I'm going to use a, uh, for the fox. I like the fox from that up. Set movement route. Actor one. Oh, uh, I forget to do this all the time. All the time. I forget to switch, and then my player moves, or I'll accidentally set it on this event, and nothing will happen. Okay, so we need to change image to the fox, which is in nature. And then needs to move up one, I think, from here. Yeah, one, that's perfectly fine. But yeah, I would like to, a Komodo dragon would be kind of cool. Like when I was planning this game originally, I did not know we were changing our name to Komodo. Um, or well, we are forming a new company because we are no longer um, a department in Digica. Digica. Digica still exists, doing its same thing as always done, which is uh, being a payment processing company. But uh, Digica Games got turned into its own company for complicated reasons that aren't worth going into. But since nothing really is changing for you guys, it's never anything to worry about it. I won't lie. I had like when I first heard, I was like, "Oh, what's what's going on?" That's like concerning, right? But then once they told me like everything's going on, it's like, "Oh, all the same people are working on it. We're just doing some reorganizing." I'm like, "Awesome." Let's see. So, what I wanted to do the player, can you make a little hop? Like can you have them jump in place? I've never ever I've never tried it. What would happen if you had jump, but the location was just like... Oh, I, I missed something. I wanted to do a show text. So we got nature, grab our little fox. Name itself's touch fuzzy. Yeah. And so when you have an unknown, how many question marks do you use? I had never tried to do as jump zero zero, but I always use four question marks when I'm doing an unknown. I do not know why my brain thinks four is the perfect number of question marks. Three seems like it looks too short and five looks like too many. It's such a there is really no reason why it should be like specific like that. Use three. Three doesn't seem like enough to me. I don't know. Yeah, I wanted uh, the the player to jump in place, and then I was gonna have them. Um, let's see. Oh, I think it's in movement route. Uh, can you show bubble in movement route? I don't think you can. I thought for so right a second you could, but I guess you can't. I could do like a little jump sound effect though. Let's let's throw in a little loop sound effect. I wonder if they just have one name jump. I always forget what sound effects we have in here. Okay. Did I turn my volume down?
why do I have no volume? I'm like not hearing any of these. Not my headset. My headset's plugged up and weird. I'm going to sit to that one for right now. We'll jump. And then we want to show bubble. Those are my ones for my battle system stuff. I think it's still, it still should be this one, just the regular exclamation. Hey, Tony Dev, how you doing, man? Are you having a good time? So how many people in chat are working on a project for the game jam? How many of you are, are jamming? I know some people are against using uh, punctuation marks. I, I think in this case, also put them in the wrong order, I think. Which one's first and you do uh, both? I think he's like this. This is also, uh, a lot of it is just, I'm writing, uh, I could, but sadly working on my plugin generator 2.0 release. Hopefully one week left. Well, good luck with that, man. Um, but a lot of this is placeholder text. I may use some of it. Um, I just want to get the ideas of what they're talking about down. And then I can go through and edit it and rewrite it. It, it is not a fox waifu spirit. Just a normal fox. Actually, it's not just a normal fox, obviously, but. I have some ideas about where I want to go with the fox, but I haven't decided entirely. I want the fox to be uh, really. Uh, kind of impish. We're going to give him some more. Um, actually, hold on. I think I want him to turn. So one of the things, um, even though in real life, people don't uh, do this so much. So he's going to be standing right there. In real life, people do not move around so much while talking. Um, but because you're uh, looking in, in from a perspective of just sprites. See, like right now, um, you can't see it because there's no camera on me. Uh, but the reason my mouse is not moving is because my hands are moving while I talk. And people like gesticulate and people have facial expressions, but you can't show that in a 2D sprite based game that much unless you have a lot of skill in like spriting out people moving their hands while they talk or, you know, even just moving the mouths or it's possible, but not like the easiest thing to do. So instead you have to, it's like a... It's like stage work. So if you've ever heard from like people talk about how you have to act on, in a stage play versus in uh, like a movie. In a movie, like they can get really close in on your face. They can catch all those facial expressions. But in, in a stage play, they can't. Everything has to be exaggerated somewhat. A lot of the makeup really exaggerates facial features. And the reason for that is because you have, it's a lot harder to see because a lot of people are sitting up in, in nosebleeds trying to watch the stage play is you need to exaggerate all your motions. So while a uh, normally people would not actually turn and walk and 
all that stuff during a normal conversation. They normally stand in place and talk. Um, it's generally a good idea to do that in your games to make the cutscene more visually interesting when two people are just talking to each other. So that was a really long discussion and analogy. So he's, I want him to move left one. Not the player, actor one. And then he's going to turn up. Yeah, that's another thing to do. Like, you could do that. Um, it's so funny because I think about it and I'm like, you know, at some point, I, I don't think it would add to the stream to have a camera on me. Also would mean I'd have to make sure my hair looks good and stuff like that. But it is one of those things that I, I constantly move my hands around when I'm talking. It, I've noticed it becomes a problem on stream when I'm trying to both talk and do something on the computer too. Yeah, you move you move him around to talk. I like, guess what I'm doing right now. He's he's being moved, so it was this one cut put this here. I'm moving the character who is about to speak. Um usually that's true. It's always before. I, I don't generally like have someone speak and then move unless like the movement is um actually what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, the movement is significant for something they're trying to do, like if they're going to pick something up or something like that. But for indicator movement it's generally better to wait until um oh, we'll put it, well, let me see it's so, like i want him to be like impish let's see as a human talking to me and we're going to remove the exclamation parts oh let's see you I think I'm just going to leave him at just doing the first one. I I thought about having him in, indicate all the other ones. Moving pixels and set tiles. It would be useful if you have like a, a plugin that could do it. Also, people who are really, really good at sprite work can just actually sprite out people moving their hands and stuff like that. Um, so this is going to be leading into the first combat and so like he's gonna he's he knows it's about to happen so let's give him some dialogue to hey Irax that's no problem being late we still have an hour and 17 minutes or so and we're just working on some cutscenes and hoping they hopefully they look out let's see don't i see is it So this is the first indication that there these the the person is the reincarnation over and over again of someone from the background um of saying like the whole thing of like basically this fox is saying they've met them before our fox is going to be part of our little other world place and he is going to have been helping guide them every single time they go through this process each incarnation Um, another thing to good is if you don't want to move people is balloon icons also so we put a balloon icon on our player um we can also do some Where's the thing where I can make it bigger and smaller? Isn't there one where I can do it bigger? Increase the size by one step.
backslash forward See if I remember how to do these things. I made couch sprites and just happened to overwrite floor damage tiles so couch was dealing damage. Look, I know that sitting on the couch all day is not good for your health, but I don't think it's that bad for your health. Why instead I just lay in bed. No using the couch. Actually, on my days off, I do, like, lounge so much. I need to not do that as much. I've been playing. So here's another thing I've been doing while um, I've been off. I've been playing one of the games that inspired this game a lot. Um, to get like uh memories of of how that game was structured and plays out which um i've mentioned it several times in the stream is tokyo mirage session so i've been replaying that it was very good i enjoy that game so much Oh, I need to close that out. Oops. Didn't want it to. Again, not final text. I'll probably. Uh... I remember remembering to put the question marks in. Yeah, I'm so weirded out by four question marks. I I'm fine with the show text tool. I do wish it was like there was a few things. I think that um oh uh uh a uh, uh, WYSIWYG, uh, what you see is what you get editor would be really nice. Um, but also, I think about it from a perspective of, I know that every single WYSIWYG um, te text formatting thing that you have, I always feel like it messes something up that I didn't want it to mess up. Or it does something in a very uh, inefficient manner. So in a way, I can understand why they would want to keep with just doing like uh, text uh tags and stuff but i mean if you're worried about that you can have it be able to switch between the two but again it is one of those things that i'm like okay so she's threatening violence against him uh but he's about to be like okay wait you need to give him a uh a bit of like maybe he's gonna get in her face that would be funny Okay, so we have is, she jumped in place. He's standing here. Then he walked one to the left. So he needs to move here and look up. Like, I think that like there is a, a, an argument to be made for changing it for more e ease of use. But at the same time, I also, think that there's good reasons to not uh go fully with WYSIWYG. I also like to say WYSIWYG. Fix the script command. Oh I really like the new uh script box. Let's see. Um it's actor one. We want to move up or right and turn up. And then we're gonna get our nature box. You know, the thing is, is I'm doing this, but you can use like copy paste to pop up the, uh, so that I don't have to redo face and name all the time, but I'm being lazy by doing more work, which is weird.
let's see how how we, like how do we want to respond because he's he needs to act again i'm like I, i'm going for something like impish but also he's indicating that something else is coming I, I know I'm trying to think of how to write the the I just like the that thing like condescending hmm at the end of something but I can't figure out how to Sorry, I need some tea. <clears throat> And so now what we're going to do is set movement route and it's actor one and they're going to go is there a way to no there is my brain one step backward that's what I wanted to do and we're going to not wait for completion on this one. Because what we're going to do is have her step forward and him step back at the same time. Player. And then step forward. Or I could just use move down on that one. Make sure it's do it correctly. And there's other things I need to probably do in this, which is adding in uh, um, audio cues and stuff like that, which I, I did hear, but I still don't know what it's doing because for some reason I'm not getting any speaker sound in this. I think the problem with automatic line break is that uh, it's the same problem that preview has and it's like when people use custom fonts it gets more difficult to make sure the automatic line break works right you move forward that's again movement to indicate something's happening I don't use scripting but i should i'll probably learn it after my for my next one just you know my thing is is just keep keep learning stuff like as you're doing it like find a plugin you think looks interesting that does something neat implement your current project and if it doesn't work it doesn't work every project should be especially near the beginning right your first projects should always be learning projects and you should always be doing something to push what you know how to do um, and I honestly, I've been using RPG Maker for a number of years. Um, it started when I was a teenager, and I'm not a teenager, 20 something years I've been using RPG Maker. I still uh, try to push what I know um, every single time. I my thing with automatic line breaks is like it's again it's a little tricky with with your when you don't know like exactly what font you're using and stuff like that but also on top of that is the whole thing of like it's just one of those things that you just need to test your game you need to test your game so many times anyway and make sure that you see every single line of dialogue in your game to make sure that none of it is breaking window and even with automatic line break you would still need to do that because it would it would make an error somewhere Okay, and then we're going to have creepy do so they're now here and here. And I'm going to have an enemy come out maybe from right here. Let's drop our 
which our actual enemies in the game are not going to be visible on screen. Um, if you want to learn about my the actual encounter system I'm using, I talked about it way back in the very beginning. I think it's one of the first things I built because I was just really interested in trying to do it. But the encounter system is going to be a random encounter system that has a way to cancel encounters uh, using a resource and a mini game. So it's uh, not on screen encounters, but it's not pure random encounters because pure random encounters are something I think that are a little outdated. Some games still do them and they're, it's fine because I have a nostalgia for those old style ones, but. Okay, so set event location. We now need actor two, who is going to be, but we're going to like really quickly have an enemy attack here. Um, I need to make sure it's on direction through on. And then we can do a movement route. Actor two, uh, change image. Where's that generic bad thing? Do we not have one in this one? One that's like the just the hooded dude? I used to always think there was one. You may have to grab one out of Oh yeah, or in my NPCs. I thought that was always like that little uh genera enemy looking thing that just looks like a enemy with a uh a dude in a cloak. It's this one, but I'm not liking how it looks, but I am gonna use it this time. A placeholder graphics, always important. There there are advantages of um random encounters but to be honest i kind of agree with the general consensus that if you just do straight random encounters because pokemon even does like a little bit different because like it's tall grass right i mean obviously we're not talking about sword and shield because sword and shield did add uh visible encounters on map um but there's like something different about it to where it's not just completely random when you get attacked. You know you're going to get attacked because you're in tall grass. Like just straight up. Uh, okay, we're going to make sure our our through is on because I think it's stuck in a wall right now. I want to make sure it can do it. Move left, move left. Um, it's to preview. He's right here. So she's right here. That's where I want it to go. I think we need to move change speed before we do this though so we need to go really fast this may be unnecessarily fast let's let's change our speed down to this and then after this goes on we're going to have play a sound effect can I hear any yet? I can hear sound effects now. I don't know why I couldn't hear them earlier. That was weird. Let's see what that jump one sounds like now. That's so cartoony. I kind of like it though. It'd be nice to be able to use formula in random encounter tab. Like what? Uh, what do you mean by use formula in random encounter tab? I'm interested in what you think about that, or what your thought about that is. Yeah, as I was saying, I'm like, I just want to understand what you're uh, saying would be neat, because I, I might agree with you. Da, 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 da. But again, the thing is, is with random encounters, while I'm looking for what... Uh... No, not bite. I'm going to turn the volume down. Just so that it's not so loud in my ears, because my head... <laughs> That's a good one for starting a fight. But my main thing with the random encounters is that you need to have something that's a little bit different. The next thing I'm gonna do is this is a placeholder. I don't have a two battle system yet. Um.
what what face set should i use for my placeholder i don't even need to but i just think it's funny to do stuff like that wait where's where's my buddy i really like this guy i like this guy he's going to be Base the likeness to show an encounter based on level value or HP. I'm still trying to understand what you mean by that. It's like confusing me. What? Let's see. What does her down sprite look like? I don't want her like laying funny. All right, so thing that I always do repeatedly, we need to at the bottom of this have a control self switch a on and it's not going to actually be that later. It's going to be the actual um Actually, the um, this plugin that I'm using lets you put in a different in number of steps for encounters. But I, it's not what I'm using it for. But I did use a slightly different one. But another thing that I want to do is make sure that this looks good. So let's play test what happens. A little hot worked. Something's a little off about that. It's because they're not, it's not synced. It feels a little bad. All right, so that all looks good other than that walk forward kind of looked weird. All right, how do I make that this look synced up? I've done it before and now I can't even think of how I did it. Actually, hold on. I know exactly to remember how I did it. I did it with these. Is it this? Is it just slowing down the speed? Was that what it was? Go to speed three and then back up to speed four? That's what it was. Okay. Doop -a -doo. This right here. So let's speed. Change speed three, and then go to change speed. I don't know if I actually completely synced those up. I may have just had you move slower. I also need to turn off the thing in Vistastella where it runs one of my events. Am I going to release this to the public if and when it's finished? Yes. Um. I'm actually, as soon as I get done with the what I consider the demo, I'm going to release that. But it's... Oh, that did sync it up. It was just that the, the walk backwards is maybe at speed 3 or something. Or just the default for an event is speed 3 instead of speed 4. Though it may just be I want to um, move the fox to speed 4. That felt all right. That all looks good. So now I just need to continue what I'm doing. 
So how often when you're making cutscenes do you do you test it and make sure everything you did so far works correctly? Are you like me? Do you, do you look at it like So I also want to go ahead and switch this this right here. It shouldn't be solve switch way A. It should be our control variables. There's 26. And we need to con change it to a constant of 10. I'm not sure if that's the problem, Sir Lagner, because like I turned it, because um, I always move the fo the thing that's in the way first. Also, the fox is on through, or wait, no, the other thing's on through. Either way, it's synced up now. Pretty good. So da da da. I like how I keep on saying I'm gonna punch up the dialogue later and then proceed to never do it. Um, but. I will do it when I get everything functioning. I think a lot of times getting everything functioning is more important. And then you can come back and do all the fixing small things. Okay, so yeah, I need to set this to 10. This is not that, it should be consistent variable, dungeon one, and is it 10 or higher? Could have typed, but I didn't want to move my left hand. All right. Let's take and first we're going to get rid of our bad guy. So let's spin him and make him disappear. I always do rabbit dancing. I always just like, I do like a small section Hit play, watch. Do a small section, hit play, watch. And let's see. What is movement route that I need? That movement route, where are you? Actor two, we need to spin him and get rid of him. I always, I don't know why I think spinning is, is the appropriate way. Change frequency. We want this up at like super high frequency. I think he's already up at super high frequency, but that's fine. And let's see, where's uh good. sound effect for this I like that one and we will change image to nothing not go there go here like the troops selected for a random encounter could be conditional so let me show you something in a second for that this is going to get rid of this guy let's put then um doop -doop -doop -doop. So what i'm using for my random encounters is this plugin right here it's by uh, Silicanth. And what it does instead of, instead of creating a random encounter when you trigger a random encounter, it instead drops a variable, a troop ID variable, the troop ID that it would be into a variable. And then it runs a specific common event that you enter. So like what you could do is you could do exactly what you're talking about, 
where you just have a different a troop ID number for each area you're in. And then you can have a common event run that calculates whatever you want to. And uh, then have it select a troop ID based on any conditions. Hey, Freeman. How are you doing, man? A huge map. Uh, because I'm running with uh, 1280, 720 for my um, resolution, it doesn't actually look that big in game. But, oh, man, my leg, I had a cramp really quick. Cramps are terrible. Make get a sip of my tea. I had some hot tea made when I first started so that to help with talking for so long. Um, it's a little cold now, but it's still pretty good. It is a blood orange and hibiscus tea. Also, I just like hot tea a lot. Okay, but yeah, so that this could do something similar to what you want to do. It's technically an MV plugin, but it works perfectly fine with MZ and has no issues. Um, it does like to, uh, you know, alert me that it may not work with MZ. But it does, so it's no problem. I need to update all of those, by the way. That's going to be fun. All right. So, back to my event. I don't know why I randomly feel the need to sing a sentence. All right, so that should get rid of to drop our, our dude. I don't know how good that's going to look, but we'll... We'll see. Like technically I could like uh do a a flutter where it like goes transparent and then untransparent over and over again to get a a different kind of look instead of just like spin and disappear entirely. But it is what it is. Okay. Oh, and we also need to, that was not what I need to do. Before this, we also need to turn our, actually probably right here. Before that starts, let's turn our character turn, turn, turn towards the turn right. That way, we're when we get out, they're facing the person. All right, and uh, so she's right here. That means, yeah, I was gonna see if I could like have her step back after the fight. That movement route, player. One one step backward. Doop doo. Can't type because my hands aren't on the home keys. And let's see, text, 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 text. Uh Yeah, it's gonna be a new line. All right, it's gotta go. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Maybe you can watch the rest of it later, as it's YouTube, and so you can always check it out later. Maybe next time, hang out too. Always good to have some more people in the chat. Have a good evening, man. All right, so. So that means he the the our fox is below and to the right. So let's move him up and turn towards her. Will we make the tutorial inside the battle event today or off screen. Um it's not going to be today. I'm going to try to make it on screen. Um but I'm going to have to make my battle system first. 
Um, I have not done hardly any of my battle system stuff set up. So it's I can't even do the tutorial right now. Which is the main reason why I just kind of like put a placeholder in. Which is a, a, a perfectly valid thing to do in your game when you're just running through. Um, to be honest, I uh, keep putting off doing the battle system because I know it's a lot of technical stuff. And like I don't want to set up the battle system on, on stream as much. Um, when I do set it up, when I do it, it'll be probably setting up the battle system itself. I will set it up off stream, but I will run through everything I did on stream. Um, because I don't want to like have something that no one knows how I did something, but there's so many little variables that I could get wrong at the right wrong. Like, and it's just going to be a lot of small adjusting here and there. And I don't think it's very exciting to watch people do that. Uh, granted, I'm doing lots of small adjusting here and there on this, but I think most people like know how to do this. I think if you don't, it's fine and I, I can give good advice, but I, I yeah, cutscenes are one of those things that like everyone needs to know how to do. And I'm sure you'll get like tidbits of things to do from what I'm doing, but uh, mostly I'm just trying to be entertaining and talking and just talking through what I'm doing. All right, so um, we're moving. We're moving our buddy, our little dude who is not a Komodo dragon at the moment, which he may be at one point, at some point. So he's going to move up and turn left. And nature, nature, nature. Foxy man. Hold on just a second. Uh, I was going to check something. I had one of my streams was just watching me with a virtual calculator on screen doing math, the battle system. Yeah, it's a virtual calculator. I had, um, there was one of the streams we did for here that was just me with a, uh, with a, I'm trying to think of the, 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 with a graphing calculator basically and making graphs of what the equations I was putting in were. Okay, so this is again, it's like. So this is just talking about the, the gauntlet that she, that she was given and how it has memories of her past um, lives that it's kind of unlocking it's it's kind of so in this in this game world reincarnation um is a big deal right like it's a thing that happens uh specifically to these main characters i don't haven't really touched on the idea of whether reincarnation is a thing that happens outside of the characters who are stuck in this kind of um reincarnation cycle i think it's not because part of the villain's motivation is that he keeps on reincarnating but the person he loves uh died and moved on to some form of afterlife and so he as long as he cannot permanently die and go on to the afterlife as long as he is constantly going to be reincarnated over and over again um he never gets to be with her so he's going to try to screw up everything by either resurrecting her into this world or find a way to break the system But doing that is going the too far, right? He's going to like break a bunch of things that don't need to be broken. Because if you do, um, the world might end. But the weapons they use for my main characters are like artifact weapons that were used by their original incarnations, and it lets them kind of remember bits and pieces. It's also how they still know how they know how to fight why random people from 
the real world know how to use swords and bows and arrows and daggers and stuff like that know how to do magic it also explains so here's the thing I'm, I'm i'm going to take a second away from the editor to talk about this it's one of those things in rpgs that has never made a whole lot of sense right the over the course of an rpg usually the story takes place over a few months at most and sometimes maybe some years if there's some time skips in there and you think about it how do these people get that good that fast and it makes more sense if they're like not actually learning these things they're just remembering something that they already knew what happens if someone else uses someone else's weapon it wouldn't activate it wouldn't uh like you you have to, it has to be the one that you it, were tied to when the big bad thing in the past happened um all right then we're going to have Uh, where's the shadows? Heroes shadow. I've been using this for whenever um, I haven't introduced a character yet. And you haven't seen them. I may uh, get a Wilhelm scream to go in here. And then we're going to have two. All right, so she came down then she backed up one step i need to like play this to make sure of what's going on also i can check out how that little spin looked it may look really bad So, uh, so like that. Um, there was a there's a manga I read recently, um, titled Helk, and it's like a really a kind of a parody of the JRPG worlds. Um, it's very funny because it starts off as like a gag manga, and then gets very very dark. But one of the things is that heroes are not normal human beings, and they just have the ability to hyper learn as one of the many things that is different about them compared to normal humans and i thought that was interesting that they even bothered to touch on it also helk is very good if anyone wants to find it all right okay cool 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 I think I need to put like something else in between there. So what I'm gonna do is he's gonna say that, and now I know where everyone is. She's standing right there, and he Fox is right there. I kind of want to name um, the Fox guy for the stupid pun. Let's put a bubble. Of her just being like really confused. Here's the confusion one. And then put wait for come. And. What, what what do you think of the name guy for our, our fox guy fox granted we're, we're probably going to change him to a komodo if i can get the stuff made for it um but i just really like 
the concept of of guy fox <laughs> and then he's gonna keep the name guy even though he's a komodo and we'll lose the pun but everyone who watched along will know why the pun is what the pun was and why he's named guy Yeah, especially if they, uh, you know, talking about the every <laughs> last time this month went, can't even deal 25 points of damage. Now look, you max the 9,999 limit. Also, if like, it's like, you know, you just grind and you were like, it's like, oh, you find a place that was efficient grinding and suddenly you went from level 25 to level 99 in the spine and you, and you only rest at the end twice. What happened? I think... Actually, I think it needs to go, it means I need to redo my. I guess we could like make this a different color, but I, I don't think it's really. I might do it later. And then, unlike all the other people, because I don't want to feel like addressing making him into a follower, I'm just going to have him walk in and disappear, like old school stuff. All right, so step forward. All right, so it's this, no, not this event, actor one. One step forward, image. I caught a fish a minute for an hour. Um, oh. Fishing mini games are so fun in, in, in video games. I do not know why I am so obsessed with fishing mini games. It makes no sense. And here I'm going to uh, event location. As I said, it's not necessary. You don't really have to do this. It's a habit of mine, and that is putting putting these back. I I don't know why. It's not going to do anything um, if you just leave them where they were. But I liken it to uh, a toy box. You know, you get your toys out, you play with them, you make them little dolls that talk to each other. And then when you're done playing with your toys, you put them back in the box. Isn't that what all of you did as kids? Surely you didn't have messy rooms. My room was clearly immaculate. That is entirely not true. Remember one time as a teenager, I found blue fuzzy shrimp underneath my bed. I do not how, know how a plate of shrimp ended up under my bed, um, but it was really, really bizarre. All right. I was once a teen boy, and we teen boys are just... Imagine teen girls aren't necessarily either, so. Cleaning and cooking as you go, yeah. It's important to do that. Oh, I bought the stuff to make a um a red pesto. Like it was using um uh roasted red peppers. And and cashews instead of pine nuts. I need to make that.
Yeah, but Alexander, we're not actual chefs. I have kids, but my my uh my kitchen is too narrow for have multiple people working in it at once in my house. All right, that works. It's functional. It can use some extra um, stuff. Roasted red peppers are a good ingredient for so many things. Have you ever had them on pizza? By the way, I have none of the passability set for this tile set. Uh, roasted red peppers on pizza is just incredibly good. So next, it's gonna be coming down here. What I'm gonna probably do is have, where can I set this event? Uh, I thought about having the event just like straight start with this one. Have the character like run this way. And then immediately after the character starts running this way, black out the screen and just come straight here. Because there's no real reason to to have the character player. Like, I guess the real reason to have the player walk there is just to give control to the player. Um, the so the second battle is going to be right here. There is uh, so I'm gonna actually make events for this it is already 8 30. scallions scallions are good on everything you're right i like i like scallions yeah it is give control as early as you can um so like that means what i need to do is i want to turn off random encounters like okay first of all i need an event here and i'll show you why is like okay it's below and this is whenever you player touch no text gonna be i guess we can have our our, our Guy, yeah, say it. And then have a new event page. And when we have variable, it's a little thing. It's after all of the joins. So it's 26. And when this is 20 or higher, this event goes away and then have it step back. Uh, that movement route, player, and step one step backward. All right. Yeah, it is the thing of like, you want to give control and and uh, you know the thing with um is also not just control but also giving getting you into your core gameplay as fast as possible like this is one of the things i felt like as much as i like persona 3 persona 3's pacing is just garbage it, it does not have good pacing um the beginning of the game is incredibly long and it's because of the way the story works it's very hard to like get into the fighting part until you have the build up to it but even after that the 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 pacing is really really messed up in person but like that beginning being so long and there was another one uh dragon dragon quest 7 has like multiple hours of gameplay before you get into the first fight it's wild Okay, anyway, what I wanted to do, I was going to add something else to the end of this, and I'm trying to think of what it was. What was I going to do? She was going to say something, and I can't think of what it was.
I can't remember what it was, so I'm just going to throw in a, uh, a very confused. I mean, the thing is, is no, fight, fighting doesn't have to be the core of gameplay, right? The, the battle system doesn't have to be the core of gameplay. Um, but whatever it is that your core of gameplay is going to be, like if it's going to be puzzles or whatever, just make sure that your character is, you're, you're, you're doing it at some point in the very beginning. Um, that, like, the thing is, is, is combat is going to be a core part of this game, right? So literally there's a very short cut scene in the convenience store you walk out you're in this and boom tutorial battle starts like that's like the kind of speed i think you should hit your core gameplay but like you said fighting doesn't have to be core gameplay if it's puzzles make sure that the first puzzle is really close if your core gameplay is just going to be um I'm trying to think of something so one of the things i want to do is you can do it is possible to just set up an area where like a region to start a event with Mrs. Stella, but then you have to like adjust to where you're standing. But I just noticed how close I was to just making this the only area you can walk through. And since it's so close, if I block off this square right here with something, player has to walk through this spot and then it becomes a perfect area to start this event over here let's do some normal mapping we'll drop on tile layer three something here that will block the path let's just grab this and then now this is the only area they can walk through then i don't have to worry about um doing a region based event i don't have to worry about moving the character into the right spot to make sure the event starts well all that kind of stuff which can be important so we're gonna have a new event here this event is going to be player touch below characters So with this one, I think that I can get away with not having the player touch, or I mean, not using the actors, because these should be visible from the moment the game starts. Um, I'm just going to actually direct put these on the map. Heroes. So we're using, I'm gonna make sure I use not the actors that I set up, because I actually set up a separate one for my heroes. This is so that um, when I'm, because when I do this game, I like um, oh, block with a treasure chest. That's actually a good idea. I, I might put a treasure chest there. So the problem with blocking with a treasure chest is that I would want to have this fight first and where it's sitting, the person could access the treasure chest from the other side. But I do think a treasure chest over here is a good, good plan. So, um, I want to be able to, when I finish this game, uh, remove everything that I didn't use in this and condense everything. Um, so I went ahead and threw all of the sprites that are my four main characters and their real world and fantasy world counterparts and put them on one sheet. So I always want to make sure to grab those when I do this. All right, so let's do some enemies. I really monsters. Yeah. Let's get some zombies because we were talking about this before. Uh, so this actually, I probably should do that for the the ones up there, the one that runs at you. So this area of the the game let's switch that to a zombie up here so one of the things that this game like the guy the main villain is trying to do is resurrect his lost love and he is experimenting with resurrecting so every single dungeon we're going to like move through his 
experiments and so like this first dungeon is going to be mostly undead stuff they we're going to have like golem -y type stuff in another one which was another experiment he has and then we're going to move towards more living creatures as we go forward forward as he gets better and better at what he's trying to do okay where was it where i pulled in our enemy okay so it's actor two Edit, and we go to switch this to Zambi. And that actually touches on another thing that I really think is interesting, and I think a lot of people uh, should consider, is the idea of the gameplay, like the types of enemies that I'm facing are undead. And their reason for that gameplay is the story. The story is informing the gameplay. Also, another cool thing is, in, you know, we can have undead, like a lot of types of undead, you'd think like zombies and stuff like that, stereotypically like, oh, maybe fire works well against them. And our main character is a fire magic user that works for an opening um, dungeon where we don't have our... Uh, a lot of our other people we have our fire cast uh our fire person and our water magic user um in this first dungeon we don't have wind magic yet or um fire water wind earth magic person okay uh let's give these names this is oliver The number of times I don't put my hands on the home keys when I'm clicking on these things is incredibly high. You know another thing, talking about all the reasonings why I want to do certain things? A lot of these things, I imagine, uh, a lot of people designing, because you have played so many games you will do a lot of these things uh subconsciously but like a lot of times it's really a good idea to think about why you do them because when you think about why you did something you can um i don't know you get like a different thought process and you can also uh play with stuff Okay, this is the Oliver Joins scene. This one's not named yet. I need to name it. I'm gonna name this one No Leave Oliver. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have um, random encounters turned off until you get down here then do this battle and then when you come back down here again i want to have this event um gonna have the fox be like oh these things are like coming back again and this will like tutorial through the encounter system down here because you don't want to drop everything literally all in one one go Oh, yeah, I, I like your, I see what you're saying, like, let's cut, move them back one space so that when you walk in, they can go, err, and step forward. I like that, I like that, I like that. Okay, so now we need to start this cutscene, which I don't know how much of it I'm going to get done because we have 15 minutes left. This stream has flown past. I think I just had like 
I think I was just so mentally done with mapping. I think that was the problem because the last streams where I was mapping, it was just like two hours felt like so long. And then like when I did the intermission one where I was just doing some eventing, that went by fast. And then I just do this one and it's just eventing and talking about stuff. Like you do really need to break up things sometimes uh, just to give yourself like that mental reset. All right. So the first thing I need to do, let's get into the game. I know this is going to make this cutscene go through again. I'll just pop through it really fast. Doo -doo -doo. Needs music and cut. I need music and stuff like that. All right. So we try to go this way. Okay, what I wanted to check and make sure was this right here, that when I got here, this was gonna be very visible. I mean, to be honest, it was visible long before then. Like you can see him up here. Like when you're, when you're coming down, you can see him up here. If you're wondering, the exclamation points are from the battle system. I can actually like click through and go beep, beep. and I think there's a cancel hold on can't cancel oh I cancel I think it's the same button as the menu why can I not Eh, something's messed up. Probably it has to do with something else. Oh well. Yep, now I'm stuck. Well, I'm not really stuck because I can go around it. Alright. Hmm. So, let's do... movement route maybe it's zombie one and zombie two I'm not gonna wait for completion I have move up copy edit this one is going to wait wait for completion two let's go back to this first one and put in like a I wonder if I can get like a they're like a monster in some of these are just way more aggressive than others. this is a little little too much for what a uh a zombie should sound like some of these sound effects are just a little much let me turn it down a little bit. Cause... I forget that when you do that. What is silence? <laughs> I should not give Oliver that scream. Though that would be funny. I may not have a really good one for right now, so I may put in a just a a what you call it placeholder sound effect. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Lower the pitch. Actually, I think the problem is it needs some of the pitches need to be higher. That sounds better. That's actually how I'd go.
I always forget about changing the pitch on things. I may go with that one. That may be a placeholder, but we'll see. Okay, and then we'll get... Our boy Oliver. Then we're going to pull in um, one of our set event location, one of our actors, and we're going to pull them directly on top of me. And I'm gonna go do some move, move, set movement round. And having a moment, set event. We're going to do through on so we make sure it doesn't get stuck on anything. I like this turn through on on like all events because it just makes it easier to make sure I don't do something really stupid. Okay, so and then we're going to preview from here. So if you run forward. He's going to be right there. Okay, I'm gonna run forward and then talk. Oh, well, before I need to do that, I need to give him an image. Make him a fox. Let's go, guy. And now he's gonna say something. So this hero, Oliver, is uh, in his previous incarnations was an incredibly brave knight. Um, and one of his bits of uh, conflict throughout the game is that he is not incredibly, this incredibly brave knight. And he's starting to feel like he doesn't live up to his past selves. Even though he has other traits that are very good, he's a very nice person. He's also very smart and learned. He's a teacher. Um and not like a crappy teacher he's a like good professor in a university in his normal person life but it it's like that feel your feel uh you feel like you're failing because the the role you feel like you got put in and you're not living up to like even like your ancestor but it's not really your ancestor it's really you and one of the things throughout the game is supposed to be him learning that one being brave is not about not feeling fear, but also um, um, that even if he does feel fear and he faces it, that's brave. But also the fact that him, his intelligence and his ability to figure things out are important and necessary for the things they're doing. And that he's still a valuable member of the team. Just want to say that you are my right time this week. I'm stuck with schoolwork and managed to take some time to clear my head and go back to my old love RPG maker. That's great that you get to take a good break. Um, hopefully you can get through a lot of that schoolwork and you do a good job on it. All right. So now I'm just going to have our, our heroine who is a very run forward, not her flaw is more in, being too aggressive and not thinking things through. Hence the you never had the pro you've never you've never been one for thinking too much about any too hard about anything. So she's gonna jump over the fox. So I need to move forward one and then so 
Oh, not get on off vehicle. Ah. Set movement route. Player needs to move right once. Then we're going to jump. And it's X plus 2. That's correct, right? X is left, right. Y is up, down. Mm. And so a preview. Just gonna go foop, and then she's gonna jump over the fox. Then she's gonna go one, two, three. I think it's like one. Let's go one more forward, then diagonal up, then one more forward. Move right, upper right. Move right. Yeah. And then it's going to start another combat. Do our, our, our uh, wonderful placeholder text with Sword Dad. Very good. At fifteen years off school, change your way to deal. Yeah, see, I I did that too. Like, it wasn't fifteen years, but I I had, I went back to school when I was twenty six, after not having been in school for a while. And the first time I went to college when I was um I was seventeen actually, uh I failed out because I did not take it seriously enough, and I just didn't go. I didn't do my work. Um, it wasn't an inability to do it. It was just I didn't. Uh, do what I need to. And then I went back at 26. It was completely different mental mindset, right? You, you, I mean, it mattered more to me then. And I did really, really well. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to test this. And I think that's going to be it for tonight because it's almost nine o'clock for me. Um, almost six o'clock Pacific, which is normally where I end. Um, uh, my throat, uh, I, Studio Blue does three hours, and I'm just like, how? Every single time after two hours, my <clears throat> my throat feels really gunky and stuff. All right, we, we already know this works well. All right, so, and we know this works. And that won't let me go that way normally if I had my passability done correct. I'm going to need to speed him up because he's moving so slow. Yeah, 9 p.m. Eastern time. That's uh, my time because I am in the state of Georgia. I need to move. Like, I need to uh, speed up both of them in that. But otherwise, like, that's pretty good. And then I'll start a battle where I have both these characters and all good. So that's like looking good. I didn't get as far as I wanted to. I really wanted to get to the end of this map, but I think um, maybe next time we'll get to the end of this map. And hopefully I'll have some time during this week to work on the battle system some, and I may be able to get the actual tutorials in. Because the actual tutorials are going to be a whole lot of... Uh, um, eventing inside to turn off like specific abilities so they can't use them and stuff like that so let us go open up this over here it's this eh. go to our see you next time screen so thank you everyone who showed up and hung out with me thank you Sir Lagna and Marc Andre is it La Chapelle I think that's like that seems like how you pronounce that. Uh Rath and I think I saw like Alexander Burkle and Freeman and Arax who had to go, but he hung out for a while. Um BG came in, hung out, Bitpocket hung out for a bit. So that's gonna be it for tonight. I hope that people either learned something or just had a good time listening.
and maybe next week my my we can get off this map it's very funny by the way i uh, changed the background on the the episode uh thing and i switched to that cliff map and the moment i switched to the cliff map i realized i was going to be entirely working on this map so so everyone have a wonderful week check out the steam sales check out the sales on a star check out the touch the stars game jam touch check out the uh free trial for the time even if you don't plan on entering the game jam you can check out mz and learn what it's about if you haven't already purchased it and i'm going to get myself some more tea i will talk to you all mm, probably on the forums throughout